All right. So our topic for today is very interesting. So it is related with our past topic, which talks about the dimen- the basic dimensions of culture. Kasama na po dyan yung uh, conflict management styles that we have discussed. So right now, what we're going to discuss in purposive communication is all about intercultural communication pa rin po, but this topic talks about uh, Hofstede's five value dimension of culture. Again, our topic for today is Hofstede's five value dimension of culture. So let us start. Now, uh, kung papansin niyo and if you're going to recall, we have... Uh, Uh, we have known Gerd Hofstein uh, that day because uh, in the in, in the introduction of our topic, we discussed na po natin yung pong, uh, four basic elements of culture according rin po yun kay Hofstein, the symbols, the rituals, values, and heroes. So ngayon po, meron po siyang dinevelop, okay? Actually, this uh, in the updated version, there are six, okay po? There are six uh, value dimensions. Okay, so sino po bang nag-develop nito? Let's try to get to know Dr. Uh, Jared uh, Hofseed, okay? So, Hofseed's five value dimension is actually developed by him. So, Dr. Gert, uh, uh, a psychologist, Dr. Gert Hofseed, okay? Si Dr. Gert, Gert Hofseed po ay, ito po yung is resulta ng kanyang pag-aaral sa research noong end ng 1970s. Now, ano po ang ginawa ni Dr. Jared Hofstede? So, si Dr. Hofstede actually studied uh, yung sa loob ng company na IBM kung saan there a lot of uh, person na from different walks of life and from different cultural backgrounds. Sa, as a matter of fact, sa IBM kung saan pinag-aralan niya itong pinakabasehan, itong five value dimension, Uh, marami pong employee and it, the employees came from 50 different countries. So we could say that the environment in that particular workplace is very multicultural. Now, mayroon pong limang value dimension na na-develop, right? So the first one is individualism versus collectivism. Then we have masculinity versus femininity. Then we have power distance, uncertainty avoidance, and task versus social orientation. So, yung pong limang yan ay i-discuss po natin. Actually, meron pong dalawa pa na na-develop. And this was developed through the help of Dr. Gert Hofstede and Dr. Michael Bond and Michael Minkoff. Pero ito pong dalawang ito ay hindi pa natin i-discuss since the, uh, these are relatively new and konti pa lang po yung data na nakukuha mula sa iba't ibang culture. Right, So, nilis-discuss po natin ngayon are the five value dimension of culture according to Dr. Gert Hofstede. So, let us start with the first one. Alright. So, the next value dimension that we're going to discuss, kasama pa rin po ito sa uh, na-develop ni Dr. Gert Hofstede, is the masculinity versus femininity dimension. Again, masculinity versus femininity dimension. Now, Please don't be uh, don't be confused. This is not emphasizing a battle between the sexes, all right? Battle between the feminine and the masculine, okay? Uh, what is uh, this dimension is pointing out is that sang ayon kay Dr. Gert Hofstede, maaari daw pala natin pong i-describe ang isang particular culture sa pagiging masculine ito at sa pagiging feminine ito. So ano pong ibig sabihin yan? Ibig sabihin, masculine cultures are cultures po na sila po ay may dominant characteristic na makikita natin sa isang lalaki. And on the other hand, ang feminine naman po ay mga cultures na meron pong uh, characteristic sila na, na commonly tinataglay ng mga babae. Ano pong example niyan? If ang isang culture ay tinatawag nating uh, masculine culture, sila po ay mas nagpo-focus sa aggressiveness, Uh, uh, pagiging material succession <coughs> excuse me at the same time is yung pagiging dominant nila in terms of authoritative powers kumbaga sila ay mas uh, assertive what they what they want is what they get ganun po yung mga masculine culture on the other hand naman po ang feminine cultures focus on the characteristics na meron yung isang babae which are they care for uh, they care for the poor okay Uh, for the welfare of the society, com- good communication, and uh, good co- uh, good confrontation. Sa madaling sabi, those feminine cultures tend to focus on the quality of life. 
So instead of focusing masado sa pagiging aggressive and material succession, yung pong mga feminine culture, sila po yung mga culture na nagpo-focus sa quality of life. So what is an example of that? An example of a culture that is feminine is sa Sweden. Okay? Sa Sweden po, they are very, very concerned for the quality of the life of the citizens. As a matter of fact, if you're going to go to Sweden and you are going to apply for a Swedish citizenship, napakarami pong benefits ang maibibigay ng gobyerno sa mga citizens nila. Free check-up, free medicine, lahat. Lahat po yan ay cover ng government. And the government even give a monetary remuneration or monetary benefits or cash para po sa mga citizens sila. So, ibig sabihin, we could therefore conclude that feminine cultures po is yun talagang they have concern para po sa, para po sa kanilang uh, citizens. Kung baga, para silang isang babae, it's like uh, they have a motherly nature pagdating po sa kanilang pangalaga sa country. On the other hand naman, ang mga masculine culture, hindi naman ibig sabihin that they don't care for the life of their citizens. But, ang emphasis or ang concentration po ng mga masculine culture is yung pagiging aggressive, assertive, lalo na po pagdating sa business. So, we can say that China possesses masculine culture. Bakit po? Because uh, pagdating po sa material succession, disputes over the territory, and even on some issues, may kita natin that they really stand firm and they are uh, dominant pagdating po sa kanilang mga desisyon. Okay? So, nagets po natin, uh, yung po yung masculinity versus femininity dimension of culture. Okay, so the first, uh, so the first uh, value dimension that we're going to discuss is individualism versus collectivism. So from the word itself, actually, opposite na po itong dalawang ito. So individualism versus collectivism. Now, what is this value dimension, this particular concept? Now, this particular uh, value dimension is the extent to which people okay, maintain their relationship towards other people. So kung individualist ka, if you are an individualist society, you tend to focus more on yourself and your right to privacy and your personal uh, personal experiences. On the other hand, if you are living in a collectivist society, you are more loyal to the group or the core family that you are belonging to. Sa madali pong salita, if you are in uh, an individualist, you tend to care over, uh, uh, parang ganto lang yan, you tend to care more for yourself. So, parang magiging equation natin is, if individualist ka, me and my family is more important rather than the group. Alright? So, individualist, me and my family is important than the group. On the other hand, pag sinabi naman po natin collectivist ang isang society, collectivist societies are societies wherein mataas ang loyalty ng people sa country or nation nila. Okay? Halimbawa, pwede nating masabi that the country or other people over me and myself. Kung baga, kung i-relate natin sa mga taga-Harmona, okay, shout out sa ating uh, uh, local government sa Carmona, sabi nga ni Mayor Roy, uh, Roy Loyola, bayan muna lagi. So, bayan muna lagi is actually a principle na somehow reflects being a collectivist community or collectivist culture. So, again, that is individualism versus collectivism uh, dimension of culture. Now, ano po ang example ng mga individualist and collectivist society? Now, according po sa data ni na nakalap at nagather ni Dr. Hofstede, ang lumalabas po pala ngayon, ang isang example po ng mataas ang kanilang pagiging collectivist is Central American uh, countries such as Panama, okay po, Panama and Guatemala. Okay? Panama and Guatemala. Now, bakit po? Uh, sa kanila po kasi, uh, mas loyal sila on their nation. Kung baga, mas uh, unahin nila, tend to, they tend to prioritize the country or the nation rather than themselves or their family. Right? So, that is individualism versus collectivism. Okay, so our next value dimension that we're going to discuss is uh, power distance. So, ano po bang power distance? Power distance is the extent to which power is distributed in a particular culture. So, what do you mean by that? 
So, ito po yung pinakabasehan or isa itong lawak na kung gano'n po kadaming power ang binibigay ng isang particular na country sa mga member ng culture nito. Mayroon pong dalawang uri ng power distance uh, measure. The first one is a high power distance and we have also have we also have the low power distance. Paano na ano ba ang characteristics ng dalawang ito? Let's start with the high power distance. Ang mga culture po na may high power distance means na mas nagfo-focus po sila sa hierarchy pagkakaroon ng organized sa sistema ng power at usually po ang power ay hinahawakan ng konting tao. In other words, in high power distance culture, ang kapangyarihan po is concentrated on the hands of the few. Okay? On the hands of the few. On the other hand naman po kapag low ang power distance sa isang particular na culture, ang kapangyarihan daw po ay ibinibigay halos o almost equally distributed. Sa madaling salita, halos lahat ng members ng citizen are given the power. Sa madaling salita, somehow, the superiors and the inferiors are almost equal. And the lines between superiority and inferiority are blurred. Okay po? Uh, ang pinaka-example po niyan, halimbawa po is uh, isang country, usually, usually po, if a country is very liberal and democratic, ang kanilang pong power distance tend to be lower. Bakit po? Because there are more representations and more representative from the common people. So, mas distributed po ang kapangyarihan sa mga tao. Kesa po kapag nasa oligarchy or monarchy tayo. Because kung nasa monarchy tayo, ang power ay mata- ang power distance usually niyan ay high. Bakit po? Kasi ang power ay binibigay sa kakaunting tao. Tagets po natin. So, yun po yung high power distance, the extent to which power is distributed in a culture. Okay, so our next uh, cultural value dimension is uncertainty avoidance. Okay, uncertainty avoidance. What is uncertainty avoidance? From the word itself, you are trying to get rid of unforeseen circumstances. In, uh, kumbaga, ayaw mo na may mga unexpected na happenings. So, kung ayaw natin ng unexpected happenings, pwede nating i-control ang mga bawat pangyayari sa buhay natin para maiwasan ng unexpected. Or kung gusto natin ng unexpected, mas magiging open tayo at mas more relaxed. Now, uh, ano po ang pinaka-impact or implication ng un- un- uh, Uncertainty Avoidance Index or Uncertainty Avoidance? Now, meron pong dalawang uri ng culture base sa Uncertainty Avoidance. We have cultures with high uncertainty avoidance index and we also have cultures that have low uncertainty avoidance index. Let's proceed with the high. Okay po? Ano po yung meron sa high uh, uncertainty avoidance index? Sa mga cultures po na may high uncertainty avoidance index, ayaw talaga nilang magkaroon ng uncertainty. At dahil ayaw nilang magkaroon ng uncertainty, they try to control Okay? And they try to make life as predictable and as controllable as possible. That's why magbibigay sila ng strict at mahihigpit na rules. Bakit po? Dahil ayaw nga nilang magkaroon ng mga unexpected na pangyayari. On the other hand, ang mga low uncertainty avoidance index ng mga cultures, sila po ang mga culture na kumbaga okay lang at wini-welcome pa nga ang uncertainty. Okay? Uh, ano po ang example ng culture na yan? According to some uh, data gathered, ang Russia po ang isa sa mga country na may mataas na uncertainty avoidance index. Bakit po? Sa Russia po kasi is mahigpit ang mga laws and they have strict implementation and regulations of their laws. Okay? Kaya po, para po makontrol at mas maiwasan ang mga di inaasahang pangyari, okay, mataas po yung kanilang uncertainty avoidance. Kaya po anong an, anong anong resulta nito? The good side or the good effect is mas maiiwasan yung mga negative things and catastrophes, calamities or sometimes kahit mga disputes, okay po? Dahil po meron silang strict na law. Dahil ayaw nila ng uncertainty, okay? Mataas ang kanilang uncertainty avoidance. On the other hand, tayo po, sang ayon po sa aking nakalap na data, ang Philippines po ay nasa range ng 40 po ang kanyang, ang kanyang uh, uncertainty avoidance index. 
ano pong ibig sabihin yan or anong implication yan. That simply means po na ang Philippines or ang bansa natin ay mababa ang uncertainty avoidance. Ano pong ibig sabihin yan? Ibig sabihin, mas possible at mas may, mas, may malaking tendency tayo na magkaroon ng uncertainty sa bansa natin or magkaroon ng unexpected circumstances. Ano pong perfect example niyan? Well, I don't want to be uh, to be more political in discussing, pero alam naman natin na nangyayari natin, ang nangyayari sa atin ngayon. We are in we are having the pandemic. Now, this pandemic is an example of an uncertainty or an unforeseen circumstances. Now, dahil mababa ang ating uncertainty avoidance index compared sa iba't ibang bansa, mababa rin yung ating pong chance na matalo yung pandemic. Bakit po? Dahil halos wini-welcome po natin ang uncertainty. Hindi po natin naiiwasan ng uncertainty dahil maluwag po ang ating mga batas at walang konkretong mga plano at solusyon para ma-solve ang mga problema. Okay? Kaya po masasabi natin na ang country natin or ang nation natin has a low uncertainty avoidance index. Alright? So yun po yung uncertainty avoidance. Alright, so at, ang ating naman pong susunod na i-discuss is the task versus social orientation dimension. So ano naman po ang dimension na ito ng culture? So, ang task versus social orientation po, this is the extent to which a particular culture considers being task-oriented or focusing on social relationship. So meron po tayong dalawang kultura base po sa task versus social orientation. Una is yung task-oriented na culture. Okay? When a culture is task-oriented, people in that particular culture tend to focus more on accomplishing more activities on, on a single period of time. Sa madaling salita, mas gusto nilang matapos ang trabaho rather than maintaining relationship in the workplace. On the other hand, ang social-oriented uh, culture naman po, sila po ang mga culture na nagfo-focus po sa uh, social relationship, pagkakaroon ng harmony, harmonious connection sa ng mga bawat uh, colleagues ng magkaka-opisina, okay po, kesa po sa matapos ang trabaho. Paano natin masasabi that a particular culture or a particular workplace is task-oriented or social-oriented? Usually po, kung ang company ay nagko-focus po sa training, training kung paano mas mapaparami yung quota ng product, training kung paano po uh, mas mapapataas ang sales, we are going to uh, we are we can conclude na sila po is task oriented culture. Ang isa naman pong culture ay masasabing social oriented. Kung ang isang particular na workplace po ay nagfo-focus po sila sa mga trainings like anger management, having a healthy relationship with your supervisor, so on and so forth. Okay po? Kaya ang tagline natin dyan is, if task-oriented is ang culture, get the job done. If social-oriented, ang motto nila is, are you okay, best? Dahil man nagpo-focus sila sa social relationship. And that is task versus social orientation. Now, I would like you to watch a video which somehow introduces the following concepts that we're going to discuss. I hope you'll enjoy this video. Let us watch this video. I'm proud to be English. My family have served and we've defended this country and I've been to war for this country. I'm, I'm really patriotic about Bangladesh. Well, I am, I am 100% Icelandic, yeah, definitely. This is a Kurdish wedding with my mom in the traditional Kurdish clothes. Da, 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 da. We're just proud black, so that's it. Yeah, I think we are probably the best country in the world, if I'm honest. Think about other countries and other nationalities in the world. Are there any that you, you don't feel you, you get on with well or you, you won't like particularly? Germany. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the Germans. You might think they're a little bit... Particularly India and Pakistan, probably, because of the whole... You know, the conflict. Because I have this side of me that's like... That hates mm. Turkish people. Not, not people, but the government. But French? No. <laughs> We're just the best, you know, it's just fact. I'm more important than you. 
I don't know you, but in my opinion, I am strong and I am, I am more important than a lot of people. How would you feel about taking a journey based on your DNA? Um, yeah, I feel very uh, intrigued. What could you possibly tell me that I don't know? So do you know how DNA works? So you get half from mum and half from dad. So 50% from each of them, and they get 50% from their parents. And back and back and back. And all those little bits of your ancestor, they filter down to make you, you. I need you to spit in this tube for me. And you spit up to the little black line. That's a lot of spit. Right, the story of you is in that tube. What's it gonna tell me? It's gonna be, oh yeah, you're French, and yeah. wait, your grandparents are French, and wait. 100% Bengali. Solid Iraqi. I'm Cuban. <laughs> you gonna tell me that I'm English? Like I've told you. Jay, can you come down and join us? I'm a little bit nervous, I have to say. So you ready to find out your results? Will you read it out to us, please? Wow, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, wow. Shit, I didn't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Caucasus, which was uh, Turkish? Yeah. <laughs> Eastern Europe, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Greece. I'm 32% British. <laughs> <laughs> what? Great Britain, 30%. Can we? 5% German. <laughs> I'm Irish. Yeah, so I'm a Muslim Jew. Great Britain, 11%. Are you sure these results are mine? Eastern Europe? Yeah. <laughs> Iceland has definitely moved closer to Europe now. I'm gonna go a bit far right now, but this should be compulsory. There would be no such thing as like extremism in the world if people knew their heritage like that. Like, who would be stupid enough to think of such thing as like a pure race? In a way, we're all kind of cousins, in a broad sense. Mm. In a much more direct sense. You have a cousin in this room. Mm -mm. Turn around and guess who it is. <laughs> Wash? Yeah, what's that? Why don't you come down here and oh meet your cousin? God. <laughs> Did That's you know fun. that? I did no idea. This is like, I, my heart's pounding right now. I swear to God. <laughs> we met. I'm Jay from everywhere, but I've to this. <laughs> I'm a real man of the world. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you. So, would you like to travel to all of these places? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so katulad po na napaulod nating video, it simply shows that we are really connected. Kahit ano pa mang lahi, kulay ng balat, itsura natin, we are really connected with each other. Sabi nga sa isang kanta, we are connected in a hoop, in a circle of life. Now, dahil nalaman na natin that we are all connected, the question is, paano natin may iwasan na maka-offend po tayo when we are communicating? At paano natin uh, malalaman kung tayo nga ba talaga ay may mga discrimination sa puso natin. Ngayon, may di-discuss po tayong dalawang practices in communication na usually ay nagagawa ng mga tao at dapat nating iwasan. And that is hate speech 
and othering. Now let's discuss each of that concept. Okay, so let's discuss the first small practice that we are going to avoid, and that is hate speech. What is hate speech? So from the word itself, malalaman agad natin that it is a it comes from a very deep place of hate. So ano po bang hate speech? Hate speech includes uh, verbal threats or verbal slurs, or it could either be actions as well that are directed against a specific group of people. Ito po yung mga salita na specifically dinadirect natin sa isang particular na tao. Halimbawa po, kung sila ay may team, usually tinatawag natin silang nigger or niga. Kung sila naman po, kung sila naman po ay uh, uh, Asian, okay? Sometimes people uh, Asian uh, people na nasa America are often uh, often uh, said na kailangan nilang bumalik sa country nila to go back to their country. Well, in the first place, they are Americans, pero they are Asian. So, bakit po ganoon po? So, those are hate speech. At kailangan po natin iwasan ang hate speech na ito. The next one is othering. What is othering? Boss Majayan, uh, a particular uh, cultural expert, uh, coined that uh, othering is the language of oppression. In other words, othering is a particular uh, language wherein it uses words or slurs to degrade or label other culture. For instance, the term basilai, plague, those words are, are considered othering na ginamit po dati to refer to the Jewish people. So, iwasan din po natin ang othering. Alright, so paano po natin maiiwasan ang hate speech at othering? Well, meron pong iba't ibang ways at iba't ibang tips kung paano po natin ito magagawa. The first one is for us to have personality strength. Personality strength starts means we should start from ourselves. We should know our personality at kailangan malaman natin. Kailangan po malaman natin kung ano po ba yung mga bagay na Minsan ay nagpapagalit sa atin or sometimes we have to know deep in ourselves if we if really have uh, this uh, discriminating tendency. So ano-ano po ang kasama sa personality strength? Those are self-concept, self-disclosure, self-monitoring, and social relaxation. Those concepts are further explained po sa module po natin. Next, aside from having personality strength, we must also possess communication skills. Kasama po dyan ang pagkakaroon ng message skills, behavioral flexibility, interaction management, social skills such as empathy and identity maintenance. Lahat po ng mga bagay na ito is kailangan natin para po tayo makipag-communicate effectively. The next one is psychological adjustment. Kailangan talaga natin i-adjust ang ating mindset at ang ating behavior. Last but not the least, is for us to be culturally aware or cultural awareness. Hindi naman kailangan nating pag-aralan lahat po ng kultura or lahat po ng mga bansa na ating uh, nakakasalamuha. But, kailangan nating malaman kahit kaunting information or we have to be aware of the things na makaka-offend sa kanila. In that way, we could, be, we could have a harmonious and effective communication. Okay, so now let's proceed with the barriers to intercultural communication. So when we say barriers, those can hinder or interfere with communicating to persons with other with different culture. Okay, so we have four basic barriers. The first one is anxiety. Next is assuming similarity instead of difference. Next is ethnocentrism. Next is stereotypes and prejudice. Okay, so the first one is anxiety. When we say anxiety, this is the feeling of stress. And being afraid of taking a risk kasi iniisip mo and you're overthinking na baka magkamali ka. That is anxiety. What is an example of that when you have anxiety? So anxiety is like you are afraid to communicate with another person perhaps because uh, hindi ka magaling mag-English or you are afraid because hindi ka magaling magsalita. Okay, you are a shy type person or you are, you are afraid, you are afraid that you're going to stutter 
Okay, that is anxiety. Anxiety can really be a big challenge and a big hindrance to intercultural communication because it prevents people from uh, building up their potential. So, anxiety po ang isa sa malalaking barrier natin when it comes to intercultural communication. Next is assuming similarity instead of difference. Now, sa unang tingin natin, sure, hindi po, ba, hindi po ba ito magandang bagay when we assume similarity instead of difference among culture? Well, hindi po sa lahat ng pagkakataon ay maganda ito. Why? When we when we assume similarity instead of difference, okay? We assume na yung culture natin and the culture that we are now exposed in is the same. So, ano po yung example niya? For instance, in the Philippines, tayo po is wala po sa ating, uh, wala sa ating hindi big deal sa atin if you're a man and you're going to communicate with another woman. May pag usap ka sa isang babae. But, when you go to Middle Eastern countries, okay, specifically if uh, single ang babae, actually, kahit hindi single ata sa Middle Eastern countries, uh, it is forbidden for you to engage in talks, okay, in conversation with women because a woman is considered as a low member of the society in their culture and women are a property of a man. That's why if you are a man, you cannot communicate directly with a woman. Now, if we assume na yung kultura natin bilang Filipino ay the same with the Middle Eastern countries, what could happen? Now, pwede makagawa tayo ng unacceptable behavior dun sa bagong culture. So, in that sense, may kita natin na mali po pala na mag-assume tayo na parehas ang dalawang culture. Okay? Next one is ethnocentrism. Ethnocentrism, this is the idea that your culture is superior than other cultures. Okay? So, hindi naman ito yung pagiging proud because being proud is one thing. But being ethnocentric is different. When we say ethnocentric or ethnocentrism, this is you believe that other cultures are inferior. Okay? Your culture is the only superior one. So, ano mangyari? Ang tingin mo sa ibang culture is mababa. They are inferior. Okay? Ethnocentrism should also be avoided. Next is stereotypes and prejudice. Ano po ba ito? We're going to uh, explain that in the next slide. Okay, so now let's proceed with the difference between stereotype and prejudice. Now, these two are both barriers, okay? So, these two are both negative. So, let's start with the first one, stereotype. Stereotype is a negative or positive judgment based on observable or believed group membership, okay? So, when we say stereotype, meron kang na-observe na behavior and then based from that observed behavior behavior from a person, you're going to judge and you're going to generalize that all people that are belonging in that same culture are the same. So, madaling salita, when you see a person, isipin mo na lahat ng kasama niya or lahat ng kalahi niya is the same with him. What is an example of stereotype? Stereotype can happen in cultural backgrounds. For instance, para sa atin, ang mga Japanese people uh, because sa kanilang culture ay accepted ang um, suicide, we somehow uh, judge them na lahat ng Japanese is ganun yung kanilang, uh, yung, ganun yung kanilang mindset. But, hindi lahat ng Japanese is ganun yung mindset because there are still Japanese people who, uh, who avoid or who does not practice harakiri or uh, Japanese suicide. Okay, so stereotype po yun. Another stereotype is uh, tayong mga uh, Filipino since we have uh, we have disputes with the Chinese people at alam naman natin that the Chinese Coast Guard are bullying our Filipino fishermen. So ano ang um, pwede mag stereotype natin? We're going to stereotype that lahat ng Chinese ay ganun ng ugali. Okay? So that is stereotyping dahil hindi naman lahat ng people in that same culture is ganon yung, yung ugali. Okay? Uh, stereotype could also be positive, pero negative yung effect. Ano pong example? Limbawa, when you are in a university, pag sinabing eduk, or medicine, or uh, engineering yung course mo, matalino ka. Kapag yung mga liberal arts lang, communication yung major mo, or language, hindi ka magaling. Because that is stereotyping then. Ano pang stereotyping? Stereotyping could also happen in gender. Okay? 
kapag lalaki ka, dapat nagtatrabaho ka. If you are a woman, dapat nasa bahay ka lang. That is gender stereotyping. Ano pa? If teacher ka, dapat babae. Kapag lalaki, ang isang teacher, bakla. That is your typing. Ang programmer, dapat daw lalaki. Kapag babae ang programmer, bossy or boyish. That is gender stereotyping. Gender stereotyping could also happen to our fellow uh, brothers and sisters in the LGBTQIA plus community. Nasi-stereotype sila dahil iniisip ng mga raming tao, they are generalizing na lahat ng members ng LGBTQIA plus sila yung tagadala ng HIV virus or HIV. Okay, that is stereotyping. Next naman, on the other hand, prejudice. Ano naman po yung prejudice? Prejudice is an irrational suspicion or hatred of a particular group. When we say prejudice, wala ka pong valid na reason. Kaya nga po irrational. You don't uh, have any valid reason for you to hate a particular group. Pero, you do so. Ano po example niyan? Prejudice is present uh, specifically in the U.S., Pero mas uh, mas nakita isang example ko diyan yung mas nakita natin sa US yung Black Lives Matter movement, okay? Nangyari ito dahil sa police brutality na ginawa sa isang Black American citizen. Now, the policemen are practicing prejudice dahil there is no valid reason naman para magkaroon ng ganung hate or ganung brutality, but they do so. Okay? So madaling salita, stereotype, it is based on behavior. Prejudice, wala kang nakitang behavior, and you don't have any valid reason to do so. But this too should be avoided, okay? Should be avoided in intercultural communication.